Hello everyone. Today we are going to do an experiment on determining the achromic point of alpha amylase. We know that alpha amylase is an hydrolase enzyme. Two different types are there: endohydrolase and exohydrolase. This enzyme endohydrolase, which is mainly an uh, amylase, which will be acting on alpha one four glycosidic linkages internally, breaking the glycosidic bonds to give you the fragments of the oligosaccharides, which can be called as dextrins. So further action of the same enzyme can continue on these dextrins to form the end products, which can be the maltose or it can be the glucose molecule. Whereas the other type of the endo, I mean, the other type of the hydrolase enzyme, which is called as the exohydrolase, can act on the starch substrate to form the end products, which are going to be the glucose or it can be the maltose molecule. Because the action of this enzyme is from the reducing end, breaking the alpha one. for glycosidic linkage is starting from the terminal end of a polymer chain of the starch so that's why then product formed will be either maltose or it can be the glucose molecule but today's experiment we are going to do to determine the achromic point about the alpha amylase enzyme so the source for the enzyme what we have taken for this experiment is an fungal alpha amylase which is generally called as a diastase enzyme so we have taken the commercially available enzyme so that is being taken over here we have gone with the preparation of 1% of the enzyme so we have taken 0.25 g of the fungal diastase or the alpha amylase enzyme and we have diluted it and mixed it with the buffer solution which is phosphate buffer 20 millimolar with a ph of 7 the sub, the stock enzyme was be prepared so we make sure that it is going to be 1 g in 100 ml of the phosphate buffer so since it is an enzyme what we have prepared the stock enzyme is being incubated or kept inside the ice so that the enzyme activity will not be lost lost the other requirements for this experiment for the achromic point determination is starch we have taken 0.5 percentage of the starch the next requirement is a phosphate buffer whose ph is 7 20 millimolar that's the strength of the buffer and the next reagent required is a iodine reagent which is required for confirming the experiment the various other requirements for this experiment let us have a tie where we have marked the times in the range of 0 1 2 3 4 5 so the different uh, times are been entered over here and a set of test tubes in order to prepare the reaction mixture so we have the micro pipettes to take the required aliquots along with the micro pipette tips so to begin with this experiment let us first understand that whenever you take the substrate that is a starch when it is acting on the enzyme it will form the product so since it is going to be the alpha amylase which is an endohydrolase which is acting on it so when you take the starch and add the iodine during the intermediary reactions we can find that instead of getting a dark blue color we will start to get the light blue color and the color will start to fade enough to indicating that the enzyme is acting on the substrate starch to form the end product molecule so our aim is to find out what is the achromic point at which point at which time in minutes the enzyme is completely degrading the substrate starch to form its end product so that is where we define define the term as a achromic point so in order to perform this experiment we have already have shown you that we are taking the stock enzyme but direct stock enzyme we are not going to use it so we are going to dilute the enzyme so one of the diluted enzyme is 1 in 10 dilution we have done so 1 ml of the enzyme was taken and diluted with 9 ml of the phosphate buffer and it also been is placed inside the ice now we are going to prepare the reaction mixture so our students are they who are ba bc bsc second year bc ndc students who are going to perform this experiment so step number 1 we are going to take the test tubes so one test tube is been taken so we are going to write the label as reaction mixture so the reaction mixture what we are going to take is 2 ml of the substrate that is the starch and with 2 ml of the phosphate buffer and we are going to add 0.4 ml of the diluted enzyme so the moment you add the enzyme make sure that they, we are going to have the timings times which is been kept in minutes is working simultaneously so that from the reaction mixture at every interval we are going to take a drop of the reaction mixture and place it on the tile so that we are able to find the 
any point so the student prerna is taking 1 ml of the starch so in the reaction mixture tube 1 ml is being transferred so one more ml will be added into the same uh, test tube 1 ml so that the total volume the, of the substrate that is 0.5% of the starch what we have taken is going to be 2 ml so next after adding the starch we are going to add the buffer again it is going to be 2 ml of the buffer solution so it is phosphate buffer 20 millimolar which is also containing 0.9% of saline so its ph is 7 which has been used for this experiment so the reaction mixture will contain 2 ml of 0.5% of starch and we are going to add 2 ml of the phosphate buffer so we have taken the two initial components required for the experiment that is 2 ml of starch and 2 ml of the phosphate buffer now we are going to take 0.4 ml of the diluted enzyme that to 1 in 10 diluted enzyme so as it is 0.4 ml so this is the diluted enzyme we all know that enzyme is sensitive to changes in temperature so we have kept in dry ice so so we are going to add now the moment we add our students are ready by taking the noting down the time so that we are going to start so reaction we have prepared the reaction mixture the enzyme has been added to the substrate so slide just take one dropper 